Hello everybody, um, so I have my 2006 uh, GMC Sierra here and we're uh, up looking at the uh, at the roof. Um, so you can see um, along this little little rib here, uh, the paint is worn away. I, I've noticed the paint had worn away a while back and now it's starting to get rusty and um, you know the rust is starting to, to come down. So I'm gonna try to uh, to paint that today and um you know got some primer some some paint and a clear coat uh, a little bit of sandpaper and some tape i have some other this is kind of the finishing paper the um, really fine grit um, but i have some uh 300 grit and 400 grit i think that i'm gonna initially use to scuff this up but um just kind of overview of what i'm doing so um i'm gonna get this all cleaned up and uh you know, start sanding down this this area where it's uh, where it's all rusty. Okay, so I got it all cleaned off, um, wiped down. Um, I'm going to start out with. Uh, 300 grit sandpaper on this um, uh, electric sander here. I've got an orbital sander too, and this is more of a, I don't know, a vibratory sander. So this is what I'm going to use because it's kind of nice and flat. So, uh, but this is 320 grit to try to get some of that uh, that rust and the, the flaking paint, um, you know, smoothed out. All right, so I've got it all pretty much uh, smoothed out with the electric sander. Um, so now I'm going to go back and uh, hand sand a little bit and just try to feather out some of these edges. Um, so I'm trying to contain it to just the area that was, uh, you know, where the, the paint had peeled up and chipped. I don't, I don't want to go. I want I want to get any bubbles or anything that's out and all these rough edges, but I don't I don't want to repaint the entire uh, top of the roof here. So. Um, I'm just going to go by hand, and, and you can see over here, um, there was a little area with a couple bubbles, so I went ahead and sanded that out while I'm in here. So, but I'm, I'm going to try to keep it as a small area as possible that I need to repair. All right, so now uh, I'm going to attempt to tape off an area, um, you know, to kind of give myself some some boundaries here. Um, I don't know, I have some automotive masking tape. All right, so as you can see, um, I kind of got my area taped off. Um, what I'm going to use around the edges is uh, some old packing paper. Um, I think you can buy, you know, the the uh, more of the cardboard type paper. Um, you know, real real masking. Um, anyway, this is this is what I have. All right, so got my tape all lined up where um, should make it easier for my my packing paper here. So I'm gonna try to line up the edge and uh, tape it down. All right, so pretty much got it all uh, taped up. I cleaned up a few of my edges. Um, and then, you know, have my paper down here um, for, for any overspray. So what I'm gonna try to do now is go back again. You could probably use uh, 
uh, heavier paper. I don't really know. I, I mean, um, I've painted a few things in the past, but never, never on a car, and never tried to make it look good. But um, I'm going to scuff up the the painted areas with a thousand grit. Um, from what I've read, uh, you know, probably 600 or 800 would work. Uh, but this is a thousand is the is the next finer grit that I have beyond uh, 320. So this is what I'm going to use and just scuff up the areas. And the idea is going to be, um, you know, for making this a little bit bigger. So primer, you know, in the areas that are, that the metal's showing, uh, uh, definitely. And then try to go a little bit wider with the paint. And then I've also got some clear coat and then try to go a little bit wider with the clear coat. So, um, you know, as you can imagine, a circle, you know, primer in the middle, then paint covering that, and then the clear coat kind of covering that, and then go back and feather out the edges. So. All right, so um, I think I'm at the point where I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up and uh, spray the primer on. So um, I can't see it, but I have a fan sitting right here um, on the hood of the truck. And uh, so the fan's blowing, so I'm at the edge of our garage and the fan's kind of blowing out. Um, you know, this is a pretty fairly small area. I don't know, use your judgment and, and listen to the, uh, you know, precautions on the back of the can here. Um, but obviously, you know, you want to wear, uh, you know, a, a respirator or a face mask probably, um, and then any, any gloves. And even with sanding, um, I wore a, a mask, you know, part of the time I was sanding. Um, so just use your judgment and, uh, you know, follow the instructions as far as where to be painting. And again, I have a fan right here. I have it on low. I'm hoping it's not too, I just want a light draft to kind of pull the paint um, the, the little bit of overspray out, but you also have to be careful, um, you know, when you're pulling the paint out, if you're spraying a lot, that paint's going to land somewhere. It could be on the, you know, the front of your car or somebody else's car, whatever you're painting, you know, whatever's nearby, the paint will, uh, flow that way. So anyways, um, you know, use whatever safety precautions are needed. Uh, so what I'm going to do is clean this area with, uh, just some alcohol and uh, you know as a prep and then I'm gonna start applying uh, start applying the primer um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start out with a kind of a lighter coat just kind of uh, get it tacky and then uh, I don't even know what the what the application times are between coats um, but that's what I'm gonna do Okay, so here we are after, uh, I don't know, a few coats, three or four coats. Um, it's looking okay. Down, you know, where I had sanded down to the metal in this little crease, uh, I don't know if the light's picking it up, but you can kind of see a, uh, you know, like a step from where the old paint was and then where I was down to the metal. So I probably didn't feather that out um, in, in a little spot here quite as well as I should have. That's probably where the 800 grit 600 grit 800 grit sandpaper so I could get that nice and feathered but you know I went from 320 to uh, 1000 you know kind of right there at the edge so anyways I'm gonna put a few few more coats on I'm letting it dry I don't know 5 10 maybe 15 minutes depending on how heavy I'm letting it dry a little longer as I'm going heavier with it I'm trying to get a little bit heavier coat each time so um, there's where it is now I'm gonna put you know a few more coats on and then the can says to let it dry for an hour before you sand it so I'm gonna put quite a few coats on and then try to sand out some of those little imperfections that are in there um, you know get as smooth as I can before uh, before I put the paint on and uh, one other thing real quick um, so you can see this line that I've started to kind of clean off before the primer is fully set up um, 
So I'm gonna spray one more. I, I stopped doing it because I'm gonna spray one more coat of primer, and then I'm gonna go back and kind of just clean up this edge with uh, just alcohol. So what I'm trying to do is get some separation between this tape and the primer. And again, I'm gonna go back and sand the primer back. Um, probably what I should really do is, you know, tape off a small area, prime it, and then unmask that, and then go back and retape it. Uh, you know, sand it and everything, and then go back and retape it when I'm ready for paint, and again when I'm ready for clear coat. That way I get that overlap um, that I was talking about before. You know, I don't want my primer all the way to this line, and my paint all the way to this line, and my clear coat, because then there'll be like a really hard edge. So what I'm gonna do is just go back and wipe down um, at this line so I get, you know, I get my primer inside of the tape line here, and then I'm gonna sand it back. Um, but just wanted to show that real quick. So I'm gonna put one more coat of primer and then I'm gonna let it dry for an hour and then go back and start, uh, <clears throat> you know, before I let it dry, after I put the other coat, I'm gonna go in and try to try to create this separation between my tape and the primer just by using uh, alcohol to clean it. And then of course it might leave an edge here that I have to sand down smooth, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put one more coat and then let it dry for an hour and then come back and uh, sand it down. Okay, so I've got uh, you know, a lot of the primer that I put on sanded back off. Uh, I'm just cleaning it. You can see I've peeled up the tape right here to try to get the, uh, the primer away from the edge, and I've sanded in quite a bit. Uh, that way when I repaint, you know, if I come up to this edge, again, I won't have a, a stack of primer and paint and then clear coat all the way up to this edge. So. Uh, yeah, looking okay so far. Um, obviously, on the corners, if you sand too much, uh, it's easy to, to to get through the primer. Um, so I try to stay away from those. I did a couple areas, but it didn't go through the actual paint that was already there. So um, yeah, I'm gonna clean this up real good and uh, go ahead and spray the uh, the actual white paint. So I think I'm on uh, three coats of, uh, of the white paint now. Um, so I plan on putting probably, I don't know, one or two more on, you know, just until that, I can still see kind of the shadow of the, uh, the primer that I used. Of course I used a gray, it wasn't dark, dark gray, but kind of a medium gray. So um, if I used a white, I might, I might be done. Anyways, um, so one thing that I, uh, probably should have done a little bit better was clean uh, a little bit more of this paper off from where I sanded um, so I do notice that I have a little bit of uh, trash you know dust and debris down there at that end and 
few little things right here. Again, this is it's outside or you know, at the edge of my garage, so um, it, it, it's going to be what it is, but I probably could have cleaned off this paper a little bit better so that uh, dust and stuff didn't, didn't set on here. Uh, so far, it's going good. I'm, like I say, uh, put a couple more coats on. Um, again, I've, I've been doing this kind of the same things with the primer, you know, maybe 10 to 15 minutes between coats, kind of let it dry and to where it's almost, you know, dry to the touch. Still, still a little bit tacky, but uh, dry to touch it. And I'm gonna keep putting coats on. All right, so I think we're about dried up. Um, on the, the color paint. I'm gonna go around and sand, uh, sand a little. I think I'm gonna try to use uh, 1000 grit just to get out some of the, the little dust. Um, and then also I wanna feather back, you know, away from this edge. So I might peel up the edge of this uh, tape and just kind of feather that back. That way my clear coat will overlap the paint instead of just running, again, right up to the edge of the, the tape here, so. Okay, so as I'm peeling the paint back, um, I got another area right here which I didn't uh, I didn't catch initially. So um, there's still primer underneath here that actually peeled some of the paint. So I'm gonna have to go back and uh, redo this this little area right here. So. Um, Fortunately, I didn't catch that before, but once I put this tape on and, and peeled it back, um, I hope that's, if you can see that, I got this big area right here. So, uh, anyways, um, I'm gonna keep on, keep on going. I'm probably just, just gonna go ahead and peel this most of the way back. And so I can get a, uh, you know, knock down this edge and kind of blend that up and in. So, I was hoping I wouldn't have to remask it, but I think it's going to be much easier just to uh, go ahead and pretty much peel that back and uh, and sand those edges smooth. Uh, help it blend a little bit better too. So. All right, so um, for the most part, I fixed my little spot up here where I pulled up some other uh, some more paint when I was trying to tape. There's still a few areas uh, I just went over this, let it dry, but. Uh, I pretty much went through and sanded out all my edges. You can still see, you know, if you look in the light here, um, here to here, the kind of color difference. Um, but I tried to smooth down all the edges. You can really see it real good right through here. Um, so I might try to sand that that out a little bit more. But uh, you know, for the main part, I think it's it's it looks okay. It doesn't look fantastic right now. But again, uh, I'll be putting clear. You know, definitely want the clear over the new stuff, and then overlapping this a little bit, and then I'll have to blend that um, blend that out sand that down a little bit and, and uh, smooth it out to try to tie it into the truck but so far it's uh, it looks okay we had to take a short break with uh, baseball practice so um, getting back to it and trying to like I say feather out these edges and then I fixed this spot you can still see that little bitty spot there so um, obviously if I just leave it and clear coat it'll, it'll stick out so I'm gonna we got some paint on it drying right now, and I'm gonna sand it back down and uh, keep keep trying to hit that um, until I get it out back out smooth. So. All right, so um, I'm ready to spray clear. I still have a little spot right here in the paint. Um, it's not quite smooth, but that's okay. I'm not not too worried about it. That little spot there. 
anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean it and uh, spray the clear coat on. So while it's drying, I um, just want to mention that I, again, peeled all this tape back. And so it's going to be a, a jagged edge and I'm trying not to spray it directly, you know, into the corners here, um, just lightly spray. So I'm hoping there'll be, you know, kind of light overspray here on top of the, uh, the, you know, the already painted portion. That way I can sand that out and blend it back. Um, it's about 10 minutes between coats for this. Um, uh, this clear coat and um, it said it takes up to 48 hours to really dry um, before you can go back and sand it. So uh, it'll probably be a few days, but I'll finish painting and then I'll just pull the masking off before, uh, you know, before this completely dries, obviously. So. And then it'll be done. I'll just park it outside, let it dry, and then go back and sand it later. Okay, so here we are. Um, it's been drying for nearly a week now. Um, and you can see the area where the, uh, um, you know, I put the paint in the clear coat. So it looks pretty rough. What I'm gonna do now is wet sand it. Um, so just get a, um, you know, a little little bowl of water, put some, uh, put a little bit of soap in it and then uh, start wet sanding. I'm gonna start out with 800, I think, and then go down to 1,000 and maybe even uh, 1,500. Uh, we'll just have to see once once I get going. So, um, like I say, right now it looks pretty rough. I mean, obviously, um, if you look at it like that, you can really see it good in the light, the difference in the um, the shine there. So it's really dull where I painted it. But um, I'm going to start wet sanding and see, see what it looks like. Okay, so um, I wet sanded um, with a few different grits, you know, trying to work my way down. And then um, I just have some old rubbing compound that I'm, that I'm using to kind of bring back the, uh, the shine. Um, so you can see, so I, I, uh, I dried it off a few times and then just look to see, you know, if we're getting smooth and then what kind of... Uh, um, finish you know scratches and stuff so i worked my way up to 2000 grit sandpaper um and then i polished out this little area right here so you can see it's pretty shiny there's still you know a very um noticeable line where i went you know this is the new paint this is the old paint so blending it in so i think i'm gonna just keep working the uh, rubbing compound um and try to i don't know what it may tell what grit um that compound is but it's just a regular off-the-shelf compound so I'm gonna try to work this line um, here 
And this area right here is where I've um, where I've been using the rubbing compound just to see kind of where we're at as far as getting all the little scratches. You know, obviously if it's still real scratched up after you do this, um, hit it with some finer sandpaper, you know, keep working it with the sandpaper. But this whole area, like I say, I'm gonna use a rubbing compound. I'm just using it by hand, I'm doing it by hand. Obviously if you have a, a, um, a polishing wheel or a, you know, a buffing head that goes on a drill, probably be much easier but I'm just gonna do it by hand so that's what it's looking like so far I'm gonna continue on that All right, so um, did a lot of polishing. I'm trying to get into a light uh, where you can see, obviously you can see the color difference right through here. So the white that I got, even though it was the same color um, over here, you can see a little bit of the difference. Uh, and then right here is what I really wanted to show. I don't know if you can see this line, it kind of comes down here. So it's kind of where the oversprayed clear coat meets the new clear coat. And you can see right there, the you know, the sanding bodywork that I did isn't, isn't perfect either. Um, but I really want to show you those that, where it ties into the, to the new paint. So, um, pretty much finished polishing. It looks okay. It's not, uh, you know, not something I would expect a, a body shop to do. You know, they, they can do much better. Again, um, I don't do this for a living. And the only reason I was doing it is because of the, the big rust spot. And again, this is on the the roof of my truck so i want it to look good not noticeable um from from far away from a distance uh but it doesn't have to be perfect so what i'm gonna do now is put some polishing compound on and uh and kind of see what it looks like and hopefully i'll still have some daylight where i can pull it outside to see what it really looks like in the light Okay, so pretty much finished polishing out. It's it's good enough for for me. Um, I'm trying to get in the light. Um, see right along here, you can see the paint line, um, the different color. Uh, but as far as the clear, you know, kind of blending in from this angle, it looks it looks really good. Um, you know, if you, if you bend down and look a little bit, you can see a little bit of a faint line. But again, this is good enough for me. It's on the roof. Um, would I recommend this for anybody? Uh, if if it's something, you know, kind of out of sight and you don't want it to look, don't want it or need it to look fantastic, um, probably. Uh, right here you can see the different color. Um, is this something I would do like on the side of the car? Probably not. Okay, so back, yeah, some of the mistakes that I made, probably not doing, you know, the greatest job. I could have done better on the initial body work, you know, before I did my primer. Um, and then kept things a little bit cleaner. So I had some dust and debris get in, and uh, I think you've probably seen in the video, you know, I, I sanded down all the areas that I thought needed to be sanded. I had taped the rest, and I ended up pulling up some, some paint that was loose. So that was a mistake. Um, and, you know, keeping things just generally cleaner. Um, but this, this is pretty much all the stuff that I used. I also had some masking tape, like I mentioned. Uh, so these are about 12 bucks a piece. So that's 36 bucks there. Uh, a lot of the sandpaper I already had. Uh, one of the other mistakes was maybe not getting um, the, the right sandpaper. I think 320 was kind of uh, the lightest that I had besides 
uh, this pack right here, you know, up to a thousand, fifteen hundred. So when I was doing my initial color, color, and then you know before I put the primer and color on, I probably should have used like a six hundred or eight hundred, kind of smooth it out. But I used the three twenty, and I think I used one thousand to kind of smooth it out. But I probably should have been a little bit rougher there. So maybe just spend that little extra money. Um, I think like a pack of sandpaper. Um, so these two that I bought, I had these already. I bought these two before I did the clear, before I sanded the clear. So that's 800 and 1,000 um, before I did my wet sand. That's what I used to wet sand. And then I also used a piece of 2,000 when I was wet sanding at the, at the very end. Anyways, this is kind of the stuff that I used. My some masking tape again. It's probably about 40 bucks here. And then I think the sandpaper was $8 per pack. So... Um, you know another 16 bucks so it was all in all i don't know maybe under 70 dollars for everything i already had a few things but um yeah that's what i used thanks for watching again uh you know it looks okay it's it's not a show truck by any means you can see the tailgate here um so i just wanted to basically keep it from rusting and, and i think that'll serve its purpose for for a while so again thanks for watching